Hi everyone, meteorologist Matt Gray here at the Ford News Now. First alert, Weather Center, a special edition here uh, of the brainstorm because we have some analysis to go through about the two, yes, two tornadoes that touched down on Friday night in the Spokane area. Uh, if you've just been busy and you haven't heard what I'm talking about, well, take a look at this. Uh, this is from uh, one of our viewers, uh, Brian Hartnett, and take a look at this. Now, a lot of people saw this because they were waiting out the Indians game in Avista Stadium. And look at this. It doesn't look like much, but you could definitely see this little funnel cloud trying to get itself together. And yes, there was a couple of touchdowns from this storm that passed across the area, or I guess what you could say would be totally separate uh, tornadic systems. So this is one. So, excuse me, Robert Hartnett, my bad. And uh, oh, now here's what I did there because we had another video that was sent to us from Brian Stern, who was also uh, at the Indians game. Uh, I actually talked to him and he said that his kids were pretty freaked out by all of this. So yeah, tornadoes can be quite scary and we don't get them very much. Washington has on average one to two tornadoes for the entire state per year. We don't have very many on the record in Spokane County. The last were in 2016. There were two tornadoes in Airway Heights. That according to the so so here, I'll just put this on, put this on mute here because it's it's uh, you know, loud and and, and uh, you can kind of see where you could see the little funnel cloud uh, tracing down. Brian said that in real life he could actually see. Um, dust and debris coming out of here. In fact, you can see this right here. This is probably when the tornado was actually touching down because you could see some action much closer there towards the base uh, of the funnel. And we do know, and you can see right now on KXOI.com and here in the Ford News Now new YouTube channel and KXOI Plus, that there was quite a bit of damage. In fact, our own LNE Dow was out surveying some of the damage in Spokane Valley today. And you could see that uh, basically it was a couple of folks that uh, had some trailers and got tipped over. So there was now, we've now confirmed that there has been two, yes, two tornadoes. Right now with Papa Murphy's, we've got a great deal. We won't, we won't let you guys sit through playing that. Um, but I will show you kind of where the other tornado was located because we're gonna do some radar analysis here tonight. And show you how these things evolved. So let me find the uh, tornado reports here. There we go. There we go. I'm recording this on Saturday night, so there is a couple pieces of information that we don't know. The National Weather Service, as of Saturday night, still not made a determination on how strong these tornadoes actually were. Um, my kind of guesstimate is that we'll see either EF0 or EF1 damage. Uh, you know, that's still over 80 mile an hour winds and in, could be even over 100 mile an hour winds. It just depends on what the tornado hits and uh, how the damage is evaluated. That's the thing. You don't say what the tornado is beforehand. You determine what the rating is for the tornado after it's happened. And you look at the damage that it caused to try and estimate what the winds were uh, in these tornadoes. So we had the one that was near the Dishman area, kind of where you had to make the big curve over to the Apple Way. Uh, exit kind of where by the uh, the Spokane Club was that's what you're seeing a lot of the pictures on uh, from those uh, travel trailers that were toppled over from the tornado now there was also some very extensive damage north of Airway Heights around uh, Flint and Mission Road and uh, this was quite a bit of damage according uh, to folks from Airway Heights uh, as far as the fire department and now this afternoon Saturday afternoon First, it was labeled as thunderstorm damage. Now we know there was some eyewitness of seeing a tornado touching the ground and causing all of this damage here, which if you take kind of a, if you live in North Spokane, you kind of take the back way uh, to the airport, you'll drive right past uh, this area to the north of Airway Heights. And so this is where we saw, unfortunately, uh, what looks like some pretty extensive tornado damage. Uh, so there you go. We have two tornadoes <laughs> in Spokane, basically from one system. So let me flip back over to the radar from 24 hours ago. And this is going to give you a good idea of how uh, things evolved. So you just uh, look at the screen and we'll show you what's going on. So here is how things started. This is about 530. We had a strong thunderstorm that was near Othello, and we had some pretty active thunderstorms as well 
uh, out to the south of the Ritzville and to the east of Lind. And both of these are actually reaching their mature stage. So thunderstorms grow, they reach their mature stage, that's when they're the most dangerous, and then they collapse. And usually when that happens, well, you also get some pretty nasty winds when they collapse, but you also, usually if the atmosphere is charged up enough, it certainly was on Friday, you end up with uh, these storms, basically their cool air that's underneath them that collides into each other, forces up some air, and creates new thunderstorms. Uh, where I'm from in Florida, we see this all the time. And that's exactly what we saw. So you can kind of see how these storms are moving and they start to fade out a little bit. The storm near Othello, you could see a storm growing to the north of it and a storm growing to the south of it. So that's what we call the outflow from these storms. So they are building new storms as the old ones decay. They're building new storm cells. And so by the time this gets into Spokane County as we approach 630, we're starting to see a line of storms form up here around Cheney, Medical Lake, and Fairchild Air Force Base. And so this, friends, is going to set the stage here for what's about to happen. And notice what comes in behind this. Right here, Deep Creek, Española. This is the storm that is going to do all the damage and how it lines up here. So watch, friends, what happens. So this is about, and here I'll show you this again. So this is where this storm gets started. And then look at all the lightning. Right about 7 o'clock or around 7.03, that's when the Airway Heights tornado pops off. So it is right in this area. And it's very difficult to see because this is where the National Weather Service radar is up here on the West Plains. So they were kind of in a radar hole for a little bit. One of the reasons why some of this rotation was not detected. Now we go fast forward. You can see this area, and I will telestrate this for you. This area, this is where all the wind is with this very strong thunderstorm cell. It's all pushing this direction. Now, when you notice, because the winds are blowing this way, right? So everything's moving this way. So moving to the east. So when you see this bowing section like this on the radar, that means there's some pretty gusty winds. And the leading edge of this, this is where sometimes you could get these little funnel clouds and tornadoes to spin up for just a couple of minutes, maybe not even a minute that they'll be on the ground. Maybe it's only for a few seconds that they make it down to the ground. But it's this where the winds are rapidly changing direction. And this is the type of setup here, thunderstorm setup, that will get us tornadoes here in the inland northwest because we don't really get the mega supercell thunderstorms that other parts of the country get that would otherwise drive the tornado formation. So you can kind of see by 720, by 720, the storm structure has kind of faded a little, but it is chaotic enough here around the Dishman area. You can see by 724, things have started to kind of reorganize again, at least on the radar, and this is where the second tornado pops off right in front of everybody waiting out the rain delay, which ended up being the cancellation of the Spokane Indians game. And then that storm is off to the races and it's out of here before the clock strikes eight o'clock. So let's back this up and I'm gonna switch over to velocity. We don't use this very often, but it is very important when it comes to severe weather, but it does happen around the inland Northwest. So what this does is the radar is measuring the wind speed, measuring the speed of all the little raindrops that it can see with its radar beam. So the red and the green. The green is winds blowing towards the radar. Red are winds blowing out from the radar. And so we combine these together to get a general sense of what the winds are doing. Or rather, excuse me, the winds are blowing towards the radar when they're red, blowing away when they are green. So. That part not necessarily as important as what I'm about to show you. So let's fast forward. This is 658. And so you can see these multiple areas where the winds are much higher and they're bowing out. So we've got one here. We've got one here, but it's in the radar hole. Now I'm gonna zoom in and we're gonna watch what happens here right in this area so here's the area where the tornado right where this lightning strike is this is where the tornado is going to pop up here in about five minutes from 
this radar scan. So the next scan doesn't show up until 7.05. Boom. It doesn't look like much, and it isn't much. That's because these are really little tiny features. It is very hard to pick up little tiny tornadoes that we get in the inland northwest using radar. But when we look back, we can kind of see them a little bit more clearly. So what are we seeing? We're seeing winds going in opposite directions, very close to each other in this area right here. This is 705. So the storm, the tornado touched down here, but the rotating part of the thunderstorm cell has moved this far in about two minutes. And where you're seeing this very close to each other, this means this part of the storm is rotating. It's right on the edge of some of this where these winds are quickly changing direction as this very vigorous thunderstorm cell moves in. And so we've got winds turning counterclockwise vertically through the storm. That's a problem because if that rotation can work its way down to the ground, that's when you have a tornado. And that's all we're looking for. We're looking for rotation inside these thunderstorm cells. I'm just going to go scan by scan so you can see this little kind of area of what at least on the radar beam is pretty weak rotation so this is actually going over sunset hill as we head towards 711 by 717 it's over the south hill somewhere in this area now we fast forward one more radar scan it's tough to do here Fast forward one more radar scan. Look what's happening here. This is about the clearest you could get it. Wind's going in, wind's coming out. But the idea is that they're really tightly packed here. And what we're gonna see is actually not very far from this, right up in here is where the second tornado touches down. And this is the radar view of what is people are seeing on the ground in real time. 723. This is where the tornado damage was. This is where the rotation is spotted on radar. And so we can actually track, even though it is very weak, we can actually track this rotation in this storm in real time. We forward one more. And so from the extent of the damage uh, in the kind of Dishman area, it does appear that this was on the ground very, very briefly. So it was certainly a funnel cloud much more often than it was a tornado touched on the ground. But it's the same rotating part of the storm, but it touched down on two separate occasions, so that's two tornadoes. So let's fast forward one more radar scan, and you can kind of see that it's still kind of there as it moves over the Opportunity area and kind of digs a little bit to the south, crosses Sprague Avenue, this now much more gently rotating section of this storm, passes over Liberty Lake, and it is out of here. So yes, very, very quickly we saw this storm move through. And like I said, that's a matter of like 30 minutes where you had briefly a little bit of rotation in those clouds, spin up enough to bring those violent winds down to the ground and then zoop right back up again. And those are the types of tornadoes that happen very, very quickly that are really, really hard to track in real time because by the next tornado, by the next time this, the radar scan comes around, it doesn't look that hot anymore and then an expo will come around and you're like, mm, is that a little bit of rotation? And you'll come back around and you'll see it again. So it is very difficult when you are in the hot seat and looking at radar to really get a good picture of what is going on. Now I'm gonna look at one other parameter here and we're gonna see if we can spot a little bit of action. So let's go here to 
702. So what I'm looking for in this is we're looking for these blue areas. And so what the radar is picking up is picking up dust or debris. And when you have a tornado that hits the ground, some of that gets lifted up into the atmosphere and it could be picked up on the radar. Now this is about 702, so reasonably we're talking about a funnel cloud that could be reaching down towards the ground right now. And there is some blue here. That's a little meh. Nothing that you could look at in real time and think of anything definitive. And let's fast forward to 724. And once again, maybe you've got some difference there, but not much to really go on. So really what we were able to see is the velocity and, well, and the winds in the storm and just the power, particularly this image right here. This is the one where you see this system bowing out and pushing in toward downtown Spokane. You know, these are the types of kind of more violent thunderstorms. And, you know, if you were, have spent any time in the plains or on the East Coast, they're kind of the mild garden variety storms uh, or like places in Florida. But for us, this is a big deal. And certainly we saw some big deal weather. Uh, pushing through the Spokane area on Friday night. So be, I will be eagerly anticipating uh, what the National Weather Service figures out, uh, what the damage of the tornado was, and or what the rating of the tornado was. And we'll keep you updated uh, on KXLY.com when those reports are released. But hey, it takes time to get it right. And so we're going to let uh, that process play out. Unfortunately, uh, no matter what the rating is, it doesn't change the fact that a lot of people have had a really, really bad day and a really, really bad weekend. Uh, and so here for 4 News Now, our hearts go out to the people who were impacted by these storms. And that includes folks uh, who just had wind damage and fallen trees that weren't even caused uh, by tornadoes at all. But anytime uh, severe weather happens, it can be both fascinating and it is also can be, uh, it can be quite tragic as well so our sympathies are the people who are impacted by the storms and that is a radar analysis of what the heck happened uh, on a very stormy day in the inland northwest and uh, a really significant mild post weather event uh, here in 2022 two tornadoes in one evening in Spokane so if you like that Hit us with a like, hit us with a subscribe. We do these videos every week. I do these videos every week and we keep you updated on news, current events, everything else going on around Spokane, Coeur d'Alene and the rest of the inland Pacific Northwest. So yeah, give us a like, give us a subscribe, whether that's YouTube, KXLY Plus, KXLY.com. Until next time, stay safe out there. We'll talk to you again very soon on another edition of The Brainstorm.